Welcome to Haynes Flat Baptist Church. Uh, truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today. I just pray that all is well with you and your family. And I uh, just want to just remind you that we are still doing our services online. And uh, pray that you will just uh, pray for the leaders in our church and me and my family, as well as we pray for yours and our deacons and our youth pastor and, and our trustees and others. We make the, the best decisions as we know how and know what to do um, during all this uh, pandemic and other things. I do pray that you uh, lift up these schools, lift up the, the faculty and staff and our leaders, not only in our community, but also in our country. Uh, as we have the, the new election, uh, elections coming out, uh, the results will be taking place the very first day of school, and our county is going to be uh, on Monday morning. And so there'll be new days and new dawns and, and new thoughts and new ideas. And so we do pray that you would just definitely pray for them lift them up, and uh, just pray that uh, you continue to help the tithes and offerings. And if you can do that, send it in. It's P.O. Box 37, uh, Speedwell, Tennessee, 37870. Or stop by Harrogate Commercial Bank and uh, see Miss Sandy Jones at the drive through window. And uh, if she's not there, the lady, other lady that's there will make sure that it goes and uh, gets to the, her, and she'll put it in the right account. So... Uh, just help out however you can, and if you need something or have questions, you can always reach me on my cell phone number, or you can call the church at 423-869-8142, and we'll try to help you the best we can. Um, just want to say a special thank you for all that uh, reached out and continue to pray for uh, Carolyn Sexton's family as she's tragically lost her sister last week in an automobile accident, uh, Miss Rose Marlowe. Just pray that you will continue to pray for that family. Uh, she's went home to be with the Lord as, and uh, as we um, just make it day by day, uh, trying to remember her and encourage others uh, as we've lost her here on earth. And, uh, but she's gained uh, heavenward bound is where she is. So do thank you for praying for Carolyn Sexton and, and our family as well. And just pray to continue to lift them up and be with uh, that family there in, in Huntsville and in, in Helen Wood over towards Huntsville, Oneida area. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get in God's word here today. God, we love you. We praise you. We just thank you for a beautiful day. You bless us with you. Many blessings. I just know our hearts are heavy and our minds are full and things are going on all over the world. Lord, we've got uh, the election times of things coming on, new uh, things in our counties and in our, in our country. Uh, the, the virus, Lord, is just continuing to, to spread like wildfire in our, flyer in our area. And not only that, schools are starting back. Schools are starting online and at home and just everywhere and in person. And I just pray right now that you'll just, uh, your Holy Spirit will just move and move mountains during this time. And I just pray right now that you'll continue to be with uh, Carolyn's family and, and uh, Miss Rose Marlowe as she's passed and uh, gone on to be with the Lord. I just pray that... Uh, you continue to be with her uh, husband, Joe, and, and, and son and daughter, and just bless them and that family as they've uh, lost a mother and lost a, uh, a wife and a, and a sister and a, uh, a grandmother and a great-grandmother during this time. I just pray that you will just put your loving arms around them in a mighty, mighty way. God, I just pray that you'll use me as your messenger, mouthpiece. Just hide me behind the cross. Everything we say and do will be found pleasing and honored and glorifying to you. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame Touch me.
Something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he's cleansed and made me Man, just uh, glad to get into the Word today, and I, I know that uh, uh, this is going to be uh, heavy on my heart and heavy on a lot of other folks as well this week and Sunday morning, uh, looking forward to uh, what's going to happen. We, don't, we have a lot of unknowns. Uh, you know, one thing that we have as unknown is um, maybe uh, how it's going to happen, how this COVID-19 is going to affect our schools, how it's going to affect our families, how it's going to affect our loved ones, but uh, most importantly, I pray that uh, you don't have an unknown of uncertainty of where you're going to spend eternity. I pray that you know without a shadow of a doubt you have a relationship through Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to be coming out of the book of Ephesians today. And uh, I'm excited to see what God is going to show you and show me and show others. Uh, during uh, Ephesians chapter 1 is where we're going to start. Um, the title today is Back to School Prayer. Back to School Prayer. And... Um, so if you're in Ephesians chapter 1, say amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we do love you and thank you and praise you. And just pray right now that you'll just use me as your messenger, your mouthpiece. I just know, God, I know there's heavy hearts and a lot of things going on as, as students and faculty and parents and all this as school gets ready to start back in our community and throughout, the, uh, throughout our area. I just pray right now that you'll just keep these uh, students safe, keep these uh, teachers safe, keep these... Uh, families and all as well and I just pray that you'll be with our leaders and and people that make decisions for our county and others in our area and colleges and all that that you'll just uh, Lord allow us to have wisdom that only you can give I just pray right now that you'll just uh, use me as your messenger use me as your mouthpiece that if someone don't know you if they have that uncertainty that unknowing of where they're going to spend eternity that unknowing if they are saved or not I just pray that they can find some time find pl some place right now and say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me before it's too late. God, I just pray right now that you'll just use me. Have your way with this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we, as we get ready to look in, in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, I'm going to be starting uh, with verse 15 and, and probably go through 23. You may read a few more scriptures along the way. Um, but um, as we get into scriptures, I, I had been looking and praying about uh, scriptures about prayer. Um, talking about back to school prayer, we, we say all the time that there's power in prayer. And if you believe that, sometimes we, we can say there's power in prayer, there's power in the blood, there's power in prayer. Do we really live that? Do we live that power of the Lord Jesus Christ to have that kind of power uh, in our prayer life? That we have prayer of expectations and we have prayer. Uh, what is prayer? Prayer is a more or less this communication with, with you and God and with, with you and others uh, to the Lord. And I think it's pretty awesome that Jesus himself gives us a, an idea of a model prayer. 
uh, he tells us this after the manner in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 9. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our uh, debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we see that. And also there's great things coming to pass here. There's a lot of schools right now uh, that are going to be coming together. And uh, when I was youth pastor at Haynes Flat, um, usually a week or so before school started, we would always try to travel uh, to every school outside the school and pray uh, for the students and the faculty and all that and circle around the flagpole or some part of the school and pray because that's so important. Uh, and I know they're going to do some prayer walking in our community this very week and have done uh, some prayer walking in our community and throughout different areas. Uh, you know what? There's, it's it's going to be a little different this year. It's going to be a little unique, but it's powerful when you look at this word prayer. Uh, prayer is, is a powerful thing. In 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, the Bible says, If my people, that's me and you and all the believers in the world, if my people, which are called by my name, we can't call ourselves anything, there's no other name under heaven which we can be saved and we can call out to and see the power of prayer answer, and that's Jesus Christ. Shall humble themselves, realize it's not about us, it's about him, and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But there's a greater time that we need to be praying before an almighty God and turning to him. Verse 15 tells us in 2 Chronicles 7, Now mine eyes shall be open, mine ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. You know what? God wants us to take a humble heart in praying in this place, in my place, at the school that your child is going to, at the school that you're next to. Maybe your school may be at home. It may be you may be keeping your child at home. It may be online. Your child may be going to college. Your, may, your child may be uh, away at college. Your grandchild may be away at child. You know who you need to pray for. Uh, we've got uh, somebody here in church that writes the names down of our children, uh, and they pray for them individually. And, and we, we talked about... Uh, um, trying to take a special uh, time and, and praying for our children and our kids. Uh, if we were meeting back in the church, we hadn't got a chance to do that yet. That it just show them how important it is that we care for them and we pray for them. And so he tells us that um, in verse 16, For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. Mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And, and that's something we need to realize that when we pray, uh, that we need to realize that Jesus is going to hear our prayer and answer our prayer with expectation. So we're going to look at some power things in prayer and back-to-school prayer as we get into the book of Ephesians. Uh, the church of Ephesus was on fire for the Lord. They, uh, they are also known as the first church, that, the church in the Revelations that lost uh, their first love. Sometimes we can do that. We can get so sidetracked and so off-wall uh, that we forget what it's all about. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Here we see that he's writing to the church of Ephesus, but also he's writing to the saints, those that are believers in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only that, he's writing to those that are faithful. You know what? That's what we have to do. And amongst the craziness and the chaos and all the COVID-19, we have to remain faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But not only that, do we have to realize who is faithful to us. Even sometimes when we're unfaithful, he is always faithful to me and you. And so Paul is writing. And as I was studying this week, I actually showed my, uh, showed my wife Amanda this week some of my notes. And I said, look what, I said, this is where me and the Lord has wrestled with what I'm going to preach, what God's kind of showed me. I think I had wrote down about 100 different scripture verses on prayer and uh, was all over the place. And I said, Lord, we, we've got to come together on this. I can't go to 4,500 different scriptures. I only got 32 hours of recording time. And they don't want me to use all of it. Just joking. Having fun with our sound people this evening. But you know, I wanted to see a, a focal point, And this is where God brought me to Ephesians chapter 1. 
This is where he brought it all together. And I started writing down all the schools in our area, even that our colleges that that somehow or another, Haynes Flat Baptist Church, the body, the believers, the, the visitors, the members, the people that's come here, somehow or another we are uh, affiliated with all these schools, whether we have students going there, we have faculty working there, we have some, uh, some people that's in the positions of everything. I want you to listen to these, these, church, these schools. It will blow your mind. And I may be missing a lot of them, so listen to this. So we're, we're, I'm going to start over in Kentucky. Middlesboro Schools, Old Yellow Creek. We've had some folks come from Old Yellow Creek. Uh, Gateway Christian, uh, Bell County High School, Bell Central. Uh, also, we have over here in Tennessee, Heritage Christian Academy, Ella Myers, H.Y. Livesey, Ford Ridge, Pyvale Elementary and Middle School, um, Cumberland Gap High School, Clinch Powell Head Start. We have the Alpha School. Uh, we have students, uh, workers, and faculty, Claiborne High School. We have J. Frank Academy. We have college kids that are still, or college professors that work at LMU. There are people in the veterinarian program. There are people that are going to University of Tennessee. There's people in pharmacy schools, different pharmacy schools. Uh, they have people that are in nursing schools, nursing programs. Uh, not only that, nursing school in California. We have people that are in doctoral programs, medical schools, different places all over. Walter State Community College. We have Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. Uh, we have people that are aff affiliated with many, 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 many and many more, maybe, just of Haynes Flat Baptist Church. So this back-to-school prayer affects a lot of people. That's probably about 25-plus schools that are part of Haynes Flat Baptist Church. That's pretty awesome. And there may be, may be more. That's just me thinking the best way I could. And so as we get in this, I just want you to think about how we can pray and what can we pray and the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. You know, one of the things that we can see in the, the power and prayer, this word power is going where we get our word dynamite from. It's pretty awesome. It's explosive. You know what? If there's ever a time that we need to have explosive prayer life is today. We're not promised tomorrow. Look around what's going on in our country, in our world. Uh, see what's going on. And so he, he sees this and he reads this. He says, Wherefore I also, this church was on fire. The people were on fire for the Lord. After I heard of your faith, if some things to see and experience the power of prayer, our faith, number one, should be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, our love for others should reflect um, the love of Jesus Christ. Love thy neighbor as yourself. We should have a caring heart, a caring attitude. Pray for one another. Don't downgrade somebody because of their decisions they're making uh, for their safety and their well-being and their children. But pray for them. Encourage them. Lift them up. How can we support them? And he goes on. He says uh, in verse 16, Seize not to give thanks for you, making mention unto you in my prayers. Not only do we have uh, our faith should be in the Lord Jesus Christ, our love should be for one another. We should also have a heart for others. We should have a vision for others. We ought to be able to encourage one another. Have a thankful attitude. Be thankful for others. Because I don't know about you, but I, I miss my church body. I miss my church friends. Uh, I mentioned the other week that, I, that sometimes I just I feel all alone. You know, Sometimes I, I want to just text a bunch of people and say, Will you be my friend today? <laughs> well, you just say hello to me. Uh, you know, sometimes we feel that way. You know, and, I, and I'm sure I'm not the only one uh, out there. And we want to let you know that we love you. We're praying for you. And I think that I even heard this week, even this very day, uh, that they said that students and young people are struggling with depression because they haven't had any outreach of their, of their, uh, and, and adults as well. They're, they're not having any interaction between people. And everything is kind of uh, just different and, and not... Uh, like it's supposed to, and it's almost kind of like, uh, like the other day, we didn't have power in the valley. You know what? You continue to go, and you turn on the power switch, and nothing happens. That's what we're used to. You know what? Sometimes we need to realize where our power comes from. What, where does a true power source come from? Where do we get our, our power from? And it should be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And so Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. He tells us, cease not to give thanks. I I never stop thanking and praising God uh, for you and for others. And that's something that if we talk about back to school prayer, we need to realize that it's not about what school we are or what school it is or how well they do on their test scores and all that. We need to hear of what, just by our spirituals talking about, we need to realize where our faith is. Our faith should be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything should reflect Him, reflect the Son, the S-O-N. And, and so I know that we want to make sure education is up there in our school, but we need to make sure, too, that we're teaching good values and good characters amongst all this as well. And cease not to give thanks for you, make a mention you in my prayers. Verse 17 of, of Ephesians chapter 1 that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him. And I love this because when you look at verse 17, he's talking about being rooted and grounded and established and being solid and the all-knowing wisdom and knowledge of him. Experience him truly. Have a relationship with him. Be teachable from him. Not only that, to be blessed and seeing others grow in Lord Jesus Christ. I love this. This is a greater time that teachers and leaders and faculties and all, what kind of prayer could this be? Not only for preachers. Preachers struggle with this as well. Uh, Deacons and leaders in the church. Um, There's a lot of things that we're experiencing right now that we don't understand. But this is the scripture verse. What it says uh, that we should have that you may give unto the spirit of wisdom. Where does, where does wisdom begin? In God's Word. We need to have that spirit of wisdom there. And not only that, the revelation, that means reveal and the knowledge of Him. Let Him open up our eyes. Let Him open up our hearts and show us the way, the truth, and the life. Let us show us what He wants us to do. You know what? There's a lot of decision making that's they're just trying. They don't know what to do. And I get that. You know what? Even we do the same thing one day at a time. But the more we lean on this, the better path will be on if we're just out trying different things it may be all over the place but if we're on the straight and narrow it's amazing what God's promises leads to and not only that in verse 18 he tells us that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened you know that's that's what God wants us to do he wants our eyes to be open and see clearly he don't want us to be covered up and halfway blind and he wants us to see clear what God's path is he wants to know to know what out of a shadow of a doubt what God's right is and not wrong and, and stay to the true uh, true path and that's what he says in verse 18 the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of this calling and the riches of his glory um, of his inheritance in the saints and you live in it puts it this way I pray that your hearts will be flooded with the light so that you can understand the wonderful future he has promised to those he called. Uh, I want you to realize what a rich and glorious inheritance he has given to his people. What a great translation as well. I want your heart to flood with the light. And Jesus is the light of the world. He wants you just to be flooded as we go back to school uh, that we'll have wisdom we'll gain knowledge and understanding not only educational wise uh, but spiritually wise we need to grow in God's word and take his word and apply it in our life study to show yourselves approved rightly dividing the word of God and that's what we need to do take it in and absorb it and soak it in that it may be rooted and we may establish a good foothold uh, that when these storms come that we are not like pine tree Christians that we are solid and even though, the, even though it may get difficult in times and storms of life may come, that our roots may go, grow deeper in God's Word and make us stand for the next storm that comes. That's kind of like what we need to do. And so he tells us this, that, um, that he prays that... Uh, I'm going to back up and go back and look at it again. Look at this. As, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus... And love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and that the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. This God, the creator of God, in the beginning, was the Word. In the beginning was God. God created the heavens and the earth. This God, the Creator, Father, uh, Creator of it all, that has the power to do it all, created everything from the very beginning. He says this is the prayer that He 
would establish you. He would give you what you need through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, we have that ability to do that. So he's saying, I'm praying, I'm praying as, as far as I can go, all the, way to the, to, all the way to the top, that he can give you what we need. And I'm going to look at, verse, look at this verse 19. Hello. And what is this? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward? Who believe according to the working of his mighty power. He's telling us here in verse 19. This is Paul's way of saying uh, this is explosive power. This is a miracle power. This is the power of, of greatness. This is the power of numbers. If you look at the, the COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus that's going on right now in our county, numbers are exploding. You know what I'd love to see exploding? The power of God. The power of prayer. How many numbers can we see people being saved? Can we say that uh, Pentecost has failed? Can we say that something is going on in our community and we don't know what to do about it? We're having to shut down schools and shut down churches because revivals is taking place. Woo! Told you, hang on. That was where we was getting to because when the power of God shows up, He shows out. And, and when the power of God releases things, it explodes. That's where we get uh, the word, I think it's uh, in the Greek language, uh, something kind of like dunamis or something like that. But uh, uh, that's kind of how it's pronounced. But that's the Greek word we get the word dynamite from. And God is saying, I'm going to do some great things in your life, my life, in the school's life, in the individual's life, in the church's life, if we will turn to him and trust him to fill us up so that we can explode and and it's a miracle that takes place when Jesus saves us. It is a miracle in itself. We deserve death, hell, and the grave. But when we say, Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize that you went to the cross for me, to die for me, for my sins, that I deserve death, hell, and the grave. And when I ask you to save me, you do. It's kind of like he reaches out his hands and says, he's one of mine. She's one of mine. And now we are a child of the king. And now his blood, his power in the blood, we sing that song, his blood has been applied that our sin debt has been paid. One time, one, one time on the cross was all it took. And not only that, God seen the obedience of his son, Jesus Christ, that was here on the earth, 100% man, 100% God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he says this, uh, verse 19, and what is this exceedingly greatness of his power? He says, I'm going to pray that you understand that to usward. I like that word, usward. Who is that usward? That's me and you and everybody, all the believers. Because it tells us in verse 19, who believe? And what is this? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mind power? What is that powerful thing? And he's going to tell us in verse 20. Look what it says as we go on. And verse 20, look at this powerful thing, this power to overcome, this power to, uh, to, to save, this power to forgive, this power to overcome death, hell, and the grave. This same resurrection power is what he's talking about. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He, he's telling us uh, all, the, uh, all of us who believe have that same power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave. He's given us the, He's praying that we have the same power to overcome all the adversities that we're facing during this pandemic, all the adversities and storms of life that we're going through of depression and heartache and breaks, uh, breakups and financial troubles and, and whatever it may be going on in our own lives. He gives us the power to overcome through Jesus Christ. He gives us the power to overcome death, hell, and the grave. That same resurrection power can overcome anything. And so as we go into uh, Scripture here, uh, continuing on uh, and looking at this, uh, he tells us that resurrection power, that mighty power, it says in verse 20, which he wrought in Christ, which he raised him from the dead, and set him on his right hand in the heavenly places. What is so perfect and what is so neat uh, about that is he has realized his obedience. He's realized his willfulness uh, to, to, as Jesus Christ as a, as a Savior. And he's saying, he is, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Uh, not only from the day he was baptized in the, uh, by John the Baptist, but also on the cross, uh, dying for the sin of the world and being resurrected. He's realizing, I'm setting him up as a king, as a leader, as, as pretty much the authority figure. 
uh, waiting to return. That's what we talked about last week. He said that he would return as he ascended into the heavens until he's going to return and call us home one day. Uh, if we don't call us home on earth, he's going to come and return and we're going to go. And, and he sets him up, gives him that authority, puts him up as the head of the church, and we are the body. Uh, he is number one, and we should uh, be the body and follow the head as, as the leader. And greatest thing that you can see in your school is, uh, and pray for your leaders, pray for your principals and vice principals. They're making some tough decisions. Our board, our, our, our leaders in our colleges and, and everything else, not only that, pray for our parents. Pray for those that are making decisions for, for, for these students and these uh, people that are raising these children. You know what? Some, some of these, some homes are blessed to have good homes. And there are some homes that are not good homes. I just got told the other day of some, uh, there's a whole lot of homes that are pretty, pretty poor still in our area, in our community. There's a lot of children going without food. And there's children without uh, good clothing and clean baths and variations of things. So we are blessed uh, to have what we have, but there are some that don't. And sometimes the school provides good meals that they've been providing, and I appreciate that. We need to pray that they can find Jesus Christ and be encouraged by his truth. And he gives him the, the authority, gives him the power, and that's what he says in verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in his world and this world, but also that which is to come. He's gave him more power than anybody else. And I love it because that's that explosive power. And we've got, if you've got Jesus Christ, you've got that ability. And he's telling them, I've, I'm set him up and above any ruler, any president, any person, any leader. Uh, he is far above all that. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus is what changes things. You can talk about God all day long. You can talk about different things. But when you talk about Jesus, it changes things. Jesus changes things. Do you let Jesus change things for you? Do you let Jesus change things for, uh, for your family, for others, for loved ones? He tells us, he puts all this thing, he puts him over everything, and, uh, and he says, and he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. This is where he is the head of the church, and he's not up there cracking the whip. He is saying he's making sure the body flows along with the head as he is the leader and we are the body and it's a beautiful beautiful picture which is his body and the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all everywhere we go we get to be a witness for lord jesus christ we can see uh, and experience his overcoming we can see that uh, we can overcome and, and so as we go back and start talking about prayer back in school when we praying for school as they return we need to pray for their uh, Pray for their faith, pray for their wisdom, pray for different leaders. But it says, um, look at what he says. I'm going to go back and look at it as a whole. Wherefore I also, after I'd heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all the saints, um, as we look at this, love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mentions of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, that you may know what God's will is, what the best thing is to do in your school, in your kids' situation, in your family situation. Not only is we're talking about school, we're talking about life. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. What does God have prepared for us in the future? What is our future? We don't know. I pray that we know our future. If we have Jesus, it's heaven. If we don't have Jesus, it's hell. That's the future that he's talking about, the inheritance, what we will inherit. In verse 19, and what is this exceedingly greatness of his power? It's a beyond our imagination. It's beyond our thought process. It's beyond even the Greek wording in the writing of the Bible of Paul's time that it was exceedingly great. It was something far above any word that he could put in there that it was his power that it was so explosive that this word dynamite comes from. It's a miracle. It's a dynamite, explosive power that only God himself can tap into and he can share that same love and that power and that passion for me and you to overcome everything in life through him because it's not about me, it's about him. To usward, 
um, who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ. We can see his working mighty miracles and power all through him and God's word here in our daily life. We can see that in our families, in our homes, and schools which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand of the Father. Uh, hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that, that which is to come. What is that going to look like? Who knows? And hath put things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. He's put it in the church's hands. He's put it that we can trust him and lean on him. Folks, we've got to pray for our, our leaders and our schools and our communities. Pray for our families. Pray for our uh, others at churches in our community too as well. And if you look at the transition in chapter 2, he actually talks about, and you hath he quickened. He's made alive who were dead in trespasses of our sins. He's talking about me. He's talking about you. You who are lost, dying and going to hell now are made alive. That same resurrection power that you were dead and going to a devil's hell, now you are going alive and you have been um, brought back to life through Jesus Christ. And, and, and he talks about it and he goes on. He talks about verse 18. For by grace are you saved through faith. That it's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not about me. I know Travis done pretty well. Hey. It's not about me, it's about Jesus, because without him I would be nothing. But with him I could do all things. I can get in touch with that power to overcome, and I know you can. For we are his workmanship. You know what this word workmanship means? It means masterpiece. God looks at us, even though we are broken, we don't think we're worth anything, we're not worthy of anything. He looks at us and he says, because of, the, because of Jesus Christ and the blood of salvation and because you're one of mine and you're created, you're a workmanship, uh, somebody that is work, somebody that is worthy of something, somebody is worthy of somebody because we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He's looking at our heart. He's looking at our ideas and our vision and our focus. And it says, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. He's planned this a long time ago. That he's created us a new person, just like a, a potter. We are the clay, and he's our master potter. Even when we mess up, he just starts all over again, forming us in his image, in his way. So I, I don't know what's on your heart and what's going on in your homes, what's going on in your family. I don't know what's going on as you think what back to school looks like. I know that our, our directors of schools are probably nervous wreck, um, probably our government is a nervous wreck. I know our families are kind of fearful and scared and nervous wreck, not know what to do. But you know what? There's something we can do is go to the Lord in prayer and realize it's He's going to take care of it. God is control of it all. He has the power to, to speak it into existence. He has the power to control it all. He has the power to save. He has the power to take somebody that is dead and let them live again. He has somebody to this go into a devil's hell and save them. Write their names in a land book of life. Put them on a new path. Take them away from where they were headed and have them looking up, waiting to go home to glory. He has the power to change you. He has the power to do awesome things. Let's not get so worked up about all the negative and all the struggling things going on in our country just now and realize about the main thing, and that's Him and His Word. And it will never return void. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He gives us all we need. Do we give him all he needs? And that's me. That's you. Giving our all and all we do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. We praise you. We just thank you for the power of your word here tonight. I just pray right now that you'll be with all the things that we've talked about in God's word. I just pray your word. I know that your word won't return void. God, I know our hearts are heavy for school as it starts back and returns. I know that uh, there's a lot of college students that it's going to be doing online, some in class, and things may change day by day. You know, we're not promised tomorrow. God, we're thankful that your word never changes, that you're steady from the very beginning of time, God, that you're, you're constant. And, Lord, we don't, we don't like change. But you know what? I pray that you will, as the Scripture tells us, change us, oh, God. Sometimes we may be going... We may be comfortable and complacent in a sinful mindset and a sinful world. And God, that's not pleasing and honoring and glorifying to you. 
That's not reflecting the S-O-N. I just pray right now, if someone is, don't know you as Lord and Savior, today can be that day of salvation. They can know without a shadow of a doubt who their Lord and Savior is. As we go back to school and we pray for these schools and these faculty and students and these community, uh, Lord, throughout the world, that you'll just protect these students, protect these, stu- these, these families. I just pray that you'll be of the homes that are good Christian homes. I just pray that you'll continue to keep them solid on, on the foundation, rooted in your word, that they can encourage one another. Uh, and, and I pray for these families that are broken, these homes that are uh, ungodly, that they can find Jesus and salvation before it's too late. God, I pray that you can uh, unify their homes, allow others to be a witness to them, encourage them, pray for them. God, wrap your loving arms around all these schools in our area and our community throughout the world. Protect our children, protect our leaders, protect our faculty and staff and others. Lord, I just pray that this 2020 school year and 2020 and 2021 school year will be time to see revival take place. Even if it's online at home, God, maybe you can revive the homes, that we can revive others in the community and revive our churches. Let us to take it day by day to serve and honor and glorify you in everything we say and do. Be with us as we uh, go throughout this week, as we look forward to what's going to happen and what's coming up, that your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.